Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 160-something of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm currently recording this in my hotel on the Gold Coast. Uh, and the <laughs> what I am using for a tripod for my camera right now, because I, fo- I didn't bring it because I thought that I would have access to the film stuff at my management's office but they're fucking closed on Sundays, uh, and I'm dumb, so I didn't think of that. So instead of having a microphone for this, I'm going back to the old setup, but that's fine, because, you know, the mics are good enough. Uh, but the real fucking thing here that I'm using is, I can't tell in this situation of, of what I've decided to use as a tripod, guys. I'm not sure if it makes me a moron or a genius. I feel like depending on the type of person you are, right, you're you're either going to think I'm a genius or a moron. So I would say that I'll tell you what my tripod is and you can make your decision. So this is what I've managed to use as a tripod. Obviously, I'm very tall, has to be quite high. So first, I stacked up all the comic books I brought. Not high enough, not at all. So I'm like, okay, well, uh, I bought a box of wheat bix so put that on top of my comic books. Nowhere near high enough. So uh, I decided to try getting one of the takeout boxes I got as well. That didn't work. That wasn't stable. So that was done. And then I was looking around my hotel and I'm thinking, ah, fuck, there's not too many things that I could use here. And then I saw in the kitchen that I have a microwave. (laughs) And I pulled that shit out of the wall. And right now... I am recording this podcast using a microwave with comic books and a box of wheat bix on top as a tripod. And if you don't believe me, listen to this. There you go. (laughs) I'm recording Spearhead Sundays on top of a fucking microwave. And let me tell you, depending on the type of person you are, that you, you would think that I'm either a moron or a genius. So, for example, if you're a moron, you probably think I'm a genius. Where if you're a genius, you probably think I'm a moron. I don't know which one of you is correct, because, you know, you genius cunts, you probably wouldn't have worked out that microwave shit, would you? No. You, with your fucking genius brain, with all that fucking brain power, you probably would have worked out how to bring your tripod from home. But not me, no. So I'm like the smartest moron on the planet. I think that's where, where we're landing on this. So uh, I'm in the Gold Coast. I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm very, being very resourceful. You know what this shit is like? Who's that cunt that that, uh, that builds shit? MacGyver. I feel like MacGyver, but with a podcast. So like, you know, MacGyver, if he was a feminist. That's, <laughs> that's who I am right now. So, but you know what? I know that professionalism is not what you come for when you listen to Speared Sundays. You're like, you know what I will listen to? I want to listen to an insane Australian yell about shit that pissed him off, even though it doesn't affect his life negatively at all because he lives in the first world. Uh, I don't want to listen to some fucking well-recorded podcasts with intelligent people talking about major issues. I mean, really, if you wanted to listen to a more professional podcast, and I hate saying this, but it's absolutely true, go and listen to the Logan Paul podcast, Impulsive. Because on a, on a purely uh, technical point of view, they're more professional. You know what I mean? They've got a desk, they've got microphones, they've got camera people. I mean, sure, they're getting Riley Reed to deep throat the fucking microphone. I, I couldn't get Riley Reed to deep throat my microwave, but, I, you know, it depends what, <laughs> it depends what, you, what you're into and what you're here for. Speaking of, why am I here? Why am I in the fucking Gold Coast? I'm checking my phone because I've got a gig later. I'm in the Gold Coast for so many fucking reasons. I have three secret massive projects that are that are under wraps that we're working on and uh, all of the people in the Patreon group on Discord I have been dropping clues about them and we have a whole fucking chat set up and there's there's like 35 internet detectives uh, on Patreon on the Patreon Discord trying to work out all of the projects that I'm posting in photos of clues and it's uh it's really really making me uh, it's it's enjoyable to watch because so the first one, I'm not going to give you any clues. If you want clues, get in the fucking Discord because I know if I start giving out clues here, I'm going to tell you guys too much and then I'll be like, oh, should I edit that out? And then I'll be like, no, I can't be bothered editing things out. I film on top of a microwave, they get what they get. And I'll just, I'll just fuck it up for everyone. So if you want the clues, you know, Patreon, Discord, you know where to get it. Um, so yeah, I'm here and uh, 
one thing that I can tell you that I'm here for is I'm here because I have a tour coming up and that will be going on sale very, very soon. Um, and so what I'm here for is I got to do this tomorrow. I am going into a studio and what we're going to do is I have to sit down and record ads for Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, uh, and then different length versions for all of those different platforms for all of the ads that go out for my tour. And you think, fuck, that sounds annoying. That sounds like you got to record five different videos in one day. Nah, man, that'd be fucking easy. I could smash that. I have to record a different ad for every single city I'm going to. And I am going to t- over 20 cities in Australia and... New Zealand. And I know I said this last year, but I actually booked it in. Well, I didn't. I got fucking other cunts to do it. It's the best. It finally got too big for me, and I finally found a good management company that actually understands the internet. So here we are. And isn't going to rip off me or you guys. I fucking hit the lottery. Hit the lottery, hit the jackpot. Hey, whatever. I'm recording on top of a microwave. You want to complain? Fuck yourself. Uh, sorry about that. If you're listening to the audio version, I just threw a lid at the camera because I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I am taking my frustration on the Gold Coast out on you guys as, and you know what? You guys deserve it <laughs> because that's what I do every episode and you keep coming back. At some point, is it really victim blaming if they keep going back? That is a sentence that's going to get me canceled. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, fuck. So I'm going for 20 different cities, right? Over 20. I can't even remember. And I got to record a fucking Instagram version. Hey Geelong, I'm coming here in 15 seconds. And then I got to do a trailer version. Hey Geelong, I'm coming here. And then a fucking Snapchat version. Hey Geelong, no one uses Snapchat anymore. Except for nudes. And then a fucking YouTube one. Hey Geelong, everyone skips YouTube ads. And then all all that kind of shit, right? So I don't know, whoever the fuck... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all of the major cities first because I'm going to be real pumped up. I'm going to be like, hey, Brisbane, I'm doing my biggest show ever in your city and I want you to come. And then Melbourne, hey, Melbourne, I'm doing two shows and I want you to come. And then Sydney, yo, Sydney. And then I'm going to do at the smallest cities I do, I film them last because you know, I know who I am, all right? I, I know who, who the fuck I am. I'm going to get to like city 10 and I'm going to be like, Hey, um, Gold Coast, I'm coming, I'm coming to your city and uh, show up if you want. Who cares? I'm bored. Boring. And that'll be the Gold Coast ad. And then 10 cities later, I'll get down to fucking, what's another city that I'm going to that's like I've never been to before? What's a fu- I think, I think, don't quote me, I think I'm going to Bundaberg. So I'm going to be like, hey, no, I'm not. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Everyone in Bundaberg just got angry. Maybe I am going to Bundaberg. Let me have a look. I'm going to look up my, uh fucking tour dates because I finally have them I'm not going to read all of them off because I know how boring that is and it's not announced yet how does this fucking thing work oh that's my tour name that would be right okay where are we September there we go there's some dates alright ooh I'm opening for that comedian fuck they're famous um Oh, it wasn't Bundaberg, it was Bunbury. (laughs) Same shit. So I'm going to get to like fucking, that's one of the smallest shows I think. I'm going to get to like, I'm I'm doing Bunbury last. And the Bunbury ad is going to be like, yeah, um, uh, Bunbury, you g'day guys, come to my show, uh, if you want. And then I'll check my phone. I'm going to, um. So if you want to, you want to kind of Bunbury, I guess that's up to you. Uh, but I mean, if you got, something else on whatever but really do you have anything else on I mean you live in Bunbury and that'll be the whole ad it's just me going hey Bunbury fuck your town I'm tired that's that's gonna be it and I know that's what it's gonna be but hey that's what it's gonna be so if you're from fucking Bunbury stay tuned for those shitty Instagram ads you better buy your tickets though because they are small shows um speaking of uh, shows and tickets and stuff the pre-sale is actually going to happen in a couple of weeks. I will know exact dates uh, in the, probably by next podcast, but if you want to get access to pre-sale, go to lewspears.com slash gig list. And I'm not going to lie, uh, there are 12,000 people on the gig list now. Uh, and to give you an idea of what happened last year, 
there were only, I think, I think about 8,000 people on the gig list and I sold a thousand tickets, uh, which was about half of what was on sale in a week. And now my tour, except for some cities, I'm not really doing any more shows then it's not much bigger than last year so however my online audience has doubled and my gig list has got 4,000 extra people on it so I'm not saying you have to buy tickets in the pre-sale but I am saying if you miss out you're dumber than a cunt who makes a tripod out of a microwave and that's fucking stupid. So I would get on loosespears.com slash gig list and sign the fuck up. Um, because you don't want to miss out on this show. It is a banger. I've been doing um, a bunch of gigs in Gold Coast. Luke is here as well. Uh, for for, a, uh, for a, n- Never you mind your pretty little head. There's no reason why he's here. Can't tell you about it. Don't, no, nothing's happening. Don't worry about it. But anyway, while we were both here, we thought we would do some gigs. Um... He left actually yesterday, uh, so I'm just here by myself, and fuck, I'm so bored. But anyway, I did uh, did a bunch of gigs in, um, uh, I did one two nights ago, and I got one tonight that I am going to be late for, but hey man, I'm the headline, so I show up when I want. (laughs) You're lucky I even arrived, can't. Um, So yeah, I uh, I, I did a gig, and I, uh, I fucking crushed, and I did all new. All new stuff from uh, from this tour. I almost said the, the name of the tour, but I won't say it because it hasn't been announced yet. Uh, and it's funny, all the fucking cunts on the Patreon Discord are guessing and guessing and guessing. And, uh, yeah, you're getting pretty close. Um, anyway, I did, I did like, uh, I was on stage. I got booked for 10 minutes and I got booed because I tried to stop when I hit 10 minutes and the crowd booed. And I was like, well, looked at the guy running the room and he was like, ah, I, I, if they want you to keep going, I guess, you know, fuck the next act. And I was like, all right, fuck the next act. And I did fucking twice as much time as I was supposed to do. 20 minutes, all new stuff. And I crushed the whole way through. Uh, it was a fucking awesome gig. And, I, and it's, it was every year I have a moment where I'm like, oh, How's the show going? Is it good? Is it done? What's happening? And then like right around this time this year, I get a moment where I'm like, oh, it's not ready or, oh, it's fucking. And I had the moment last night and I was like, or two nights ago, I was like, it's fucking fire. It's fucking fire, which is good because last year, I at the same moment last year, I was like, oh, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta fucking work on it. And last year, I kind of... Last year, the show was so good. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I fluked that shit. I was... I got to this point, like, two months before I was about to start the tour last year. I went through all my material. I did the trial show, and which was about fucking three weeks before the actual show. And I was like... Even, Luke saw it, and both of us were like, Oh, I don't think you've got a good one here. And then I just... Fucked off all my videos. I fucked off everything, and I was like, I need to write, wrote, fixed it, and it was an amazing show. Uh, the it was the best show I'd ever done. I don't know how the fuck I pulled it out my ass, but this year, I it, that last year scared the fuck out of me. So this year, I was like, I gotta, I gotta write the fuck out of every bit I do, and um, yeah, it's good. And you know what's cool? I think being in New York and LA and seeing the best comedians in the world. And even cunts I'd never heard of that were just fucking amazing because they gig so often there. It completely changed how I write my jokes and my philosophy behind it. Because before I was like, oh, I'm going to... I would do like... I would write my my material and I write my jokes and and often my jokes are quite long and I do stories. uh, And I've always been really fucking good at smashing the punchline right at the end but seeing all of these comics in New York it's like it's almost like their jokes don't ever have a punchline or they have a punchline but it's not like they they've got punchlines bang 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 like every second sentence almost is a punchline so it's like the joke is fucking hilarious all the way through and then hits a massive bang at the end. Whereas I was kind of like, 
oh, I'll be funny and then talk and then funny and then talk and then funny and then hit them with a huge one at the end. But now I'm like, nah, I can kind of do both. So I can, I can still tell the, the hilarious story or the funny premise or, or, the, or the opinion, but I can make that shit so much punchier and fit so many more jokes within the joke, if you understand what I mean. And uh, I, did, yeah, I did the set last night and it, yeah, it's totally on point. So I think, I man, I really think this show is going to be fucking good. Uh, and, and also, I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about my tour, but anyway, I'm here on the Gold Coast and uh, uh, another thing we're working on is, dude, I've, been, I've had Connor Fairclough here all day. He was with me in America and why was he with me in America with like another camera guy and he had a camera and I had microphones and we were filming stuff. I don't know. You can't, what are you asking me for? I don't know anything. I build tripods out of microwaves. What do I know? Um, but he was over and we were editing. We were cooking up something very special and... Uh, it's the first time I've seen the rough cut, uh, and we, we hired out a little studio yesterday, and we filmed something very special, very flash, a bunch of photos in the Patreon Discord, a bunch of clues in there, if you come to want to start guessing and figuring out what it is. Uh, uh, but I, I first, like, rough cut, he came over, he connected his laptop to the TV in the hotel, and we just edited together, and this is, when I say, like, this is what I've been trying to do, to do this is not stand up with with uh let's just say tv they're not gonna let me in they're not letting me make tv but you know what i don't fucking need tv to make tv we're making some shit we're making a fucking movie bro it's uh very very good this little thing that we've made and uh that will also be coming out this year i think the last six months of this year is going to be fucking hectic for you guys, to the point where I'm going to finish it all up, and you'll be like, "Oh, that was amazing! What's next?" And I'll be like, "I'm tired. I want to, <laughs> I want to sleep." Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm going to stop yelling about what I'm about to do. Um, so I'm on Gold Coast, dude. I love Gold Coast crowds because they're all fucking party cunts. But dude, Gold Coast is an amazing city for. Everyone except me. There's nothing for me here, dude. Nothing. Like, I look up the stuff that's in my area. It's such a party town. I don't like clubs. I don't like bars. I don't like uh, talking to humans. All I want is, like, when I go to any city, is I want a fucking comic book store. I want a fucking, maybe an internet cafe that I can go to and play World of Warcraft like a fucking virgin. And then some, like, sushi. And Gold Coast has none of that shit. None of it. Absolutely fucking none, bro. Like, I walk out, I, I walk around Gold Coast and I go, oh, this place sucks. And everyone who's with me goes, why? There's so many things to do. There's the beach. Hate the beach. <laughs> so all I've been doing, man, is staying in my hotel, watching Dragon Ball anime, uh, and going to the hotel gym. That's the only thing that I've been doing. The, last night, this is what I did, right? Me and Luke, we did this gig. In, we had to go to fucking Brisbane for a gig. Three hours on the train, on public transport. That's fucked. We should have hired a car. Nah, that would have been too expensive. So anyway, three hours on the train for a gig and then fucking three hours back. So I get back and I'm, I'm just... I'm exhausted, but the gig was so good that I'm all amped up. Like, I can't sleep. I get home at, like, fucking... I think I got home at, like, 9 p.m. because it was kind of an early gig. Get home at 9. I'm not tired at all. So I'm like, well, what am I going to do? I decide to walk around Gold Coast, uh, the, the area that I'm in. I'm in Broad Beach. And I walk around, and I look at all the shit, and there's so many things to do. Like, like so many fucking things that you can do here. It's a tourist town. Everything you can think of that you would want to do when you're on a holiday is here. And I look at all of it and I go, I would never in my fucking life step foot into like a karaoke bar. Dude, if you take me to a karaoke bar, I'm going to go. I'll go. Oh, yeah. If you invite me to a karaoke bar, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, oh, a karaoke bar. I would love to. There's nothing else I would love to do more than go to a karaoke bar and sing with drunken strangers. I'm going to say yes, straight away, no hesitation, right? 
zero hesitation at all. Go to the karaoke bar with you. And then we get in, right? And there's people in there and they're all fucking drunk. They're all screaming into microphones. No one can sing. It's horrendous. Everyone's having a great time. Me, I'm smiling. But not one of those like nice, like, like you, know when a, you know when a girl smiles. Pure joy. Be- like a beautiful girl giving a beautiful smile because she's genuinely happy. Not one of them, right? One of those fucking the other smile that girls do. You know that smile that girls do in fucking Instagram photos? It's that smile that's like, it's... Like the mouth is smiling, but none of the none of the rest of the girl is. You know, it's that fucking it's that kind of smile that it's like a pose. You know, where they've sat in the fucking mirror or looking at their selfie camera, and they've worked out. Well, if I show this amount of teeth and I move my jaw like this, and then I tilt my head this way, this is the best that I look in a photo. And they uh, they they're doing the smile pose, but they're not smiling, and they look. So fucking dead in the eyes that you can't even believe that they can't see it. And I swear, 70 to 80% of girls who post smiling photos on Instagram look like shape-shifting demons or aliens that have possessed a human. And they're doing the right muscles, but you can see behind their face, they're just going, I hope this turns out to be a good photo. I really, I hope this turns out to be a good photo. I hope I get lots of likes. That's what they're doing, right? One of those fucking serial killer Instagram whore smiles. That's what I'm doing. Like, like I look like fucking Chucky. That's what I'm doing. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm plotting to, on what I'm going to do as soon as we step foot in the karaoke bar and we get our little booth, right? So we go in there. I'm doing the Chucky smile. My mate looks at me and he goes, oh, fuck. It looks like he, he's enjoying it, but something about him is like, is spiking my adrenaline. <laughs> I don't know. It's making me uneasy. He looks like he's... I don't know what's... There's something wrong with it. It would take him like a couple weeks of staring at me to realize that I'm plotting to do something, right? And we get down and we sit and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I can't wait for karaoke. And then my mate goes up and he starts singing. My other friend, she orders drinks, you know, for the for the table. We all get drinks and I order a Coke because I don't drink and they all get alcohol and they start to get a little bit drunk and the singing starts to get a little bit worse. And I'm sitting there doing my fucking Chucky Death Stare smile, uh, waiting for my turn, right? And my mate goes up and he's awful. He sings some shit like Take On Me, you know, just something that no person should ever sing unless they know how to do it and he doesn't know how to do it. And then my, you know, my lady friend, she'll get up, you know, she'll sing, she'll sing something like even more inappropriate for a girl who can't sing to sing, like the fucking, like the final countdown, you know, something, just something so left of field that you would never expect a girl who can't sing to sing, super ambitious, you know. It's either that or fucking I Can See a Halo by Beyonce, whatever that song is. I can see your halo. Just something that <laughs> that no one other than Beyonce should sing. That's another thing. If any cunt ever tries to sing Halo, just they should have their vocal cords revoked. You can't sing it. Only Beyonce can sing it. I don't even like Beyonce that much, but if you try and sing Halo, hey, you're not good enough. Don't. Um, anyway, my turn rolls around. It's been about an hour. You know, everyone's had a few, had a few sing-along songs. Everyone's, everyone's having a good time. Everyone's nice and buzzed. And then I get up there and I'm still doing that weird fucking thought smile that, you know, that, that e-girl thought smile, right? With my tits in the camera. And I'm like, I'm smiling. I want likes. That kind of shit. Like, oh, fit tea. The fit tea. (laughs) It's the fit tea smile. That's what it is, right? And then I get up there and they give me the mic and it's wired and, uh, and, and they go, oh, what song do you want to play? And I go, Killing in the Name of. And everyone goes, oh yeah, that's a fucking banger. And then the song plays and immediately I smash the screen behind me with my fist and I grab the mic and I wrap the cord around whoever invited me to karaoke and I fucking murder them in front of everyone while Killing in the Name of plays. And I fucking choke the shit out of them, still doing the smile. And just before they die, I whisper, karaoke sucks, get a personality cunt. And they die, I go to prison, and I never have to hear karaoke again. And that's what I would do if you invited me to karaoke. And that's that's how I live my life, okay? So don't invite me to karaoke unless you want to die to the tune of Killing in the Name of, all right? <laughs> anyway, I'm uh, I'm having a good time. 
I'm not. I hate the Gold Coast. I love Gold Coast shows and I love Gold Coast people. I just hate everything around it because it's a nice city. And I don't like nice things. I like nerdy shit. You know, last night I was sitting here and I was so fucking bored. So f- oh, I didn't tell you what I was doing when I got home from the gig. I was awake. I just ranted about killing someone for inviting me to a thing like a good friend because that's me. Um, what did I do? Oh yeah, I fucking I got home at like nine or ten, and I was so amped up from the show I couldn't sleep, and I knew that I wasn't gonna sleep for ages because whenever you crush, you just like fucking ah, oh, it's like that fight or flight instinct, and you're like oh yeah, triumph. Um, so I'm like, well, I know, I know me. I'm not going to sleep for hours. So I left and I, I looked for shit to do. There was nothing to do, right? I killed a few cunts because they were flying outside a karaoke bar. That was all right. That kept me going for 10 minutes. Um, that kept me going for a couple of plays of killing in the name of, what is that, six, seven minutes? Anyway, uh, I uh, just go and start looking for food. I'm like, oh, I, just, I guess I'll just get a pizza. And then I was like, you know what? I'd be in the gym in the morning because I'm fucking working it. Um... And I thought I was really hungry, so I'm like, oh, I need to get some calories in, so I'm just gonna be a piece of shit and get a family sized pizza. Because I'm like, oh, I'll eat half of it and then I'll eat the half tomorrow night. Uh, family sized pizza, uh, order that shit, capricosa, no anchovies, extra cheese. Shouldn't charge me for the fucking cheese, you cunt, because I know that fish is more expensive than cheese. No fish, extra cheese, we're even, bro. In fact, I think you're still on top. So if you try and charge me more for that extra cheese, I will actually say something. And the guy tried to charge me for extra cheese, and I fucking said no, cunt. Give me that extra cheese, and I'm not paying for your fish, we're even. Suck my dick. Otherwise, let's go play karaoke if you know what I mean. Play karaoke? Whatever. Angry about cheese. My life is amazing. <laughs> That's the angriest I get, is when some cunt tries to charge me a dollar extra for cheese on a family pizza that I'm getting by myself because I'm in the Gold Coast because my job is telling dick jokes. And, that, and I'm still finding shit to be pissed off at. Anyway, wait around, get my pizza, uh, and... Uh, Wait, waiting around for my pizza and then I start walking around and I go, Oh, there's a lot of ice cream places around here. A lot of, lot of gelatis. And hey, I'm just going to say it. Time for all of us to acknowledge uh, this fact. Gelati sucks. Not good. If you, put, if you put a gelati joint next to a fucking ice cream place, I'm going ice cream every single time. If you put a gelati place by itself with no option for ice cream, I'm walking past that shit 100% of the time. Gelati or gelato or whatever the fuck you want to call it sucks. Not good. Never been good. Just tastes like spicy ice. That's what it tastes like. It's like fucking weird tasting ice. Get rid of it. Just sell ice cream. What did you spend a fucking $200,000 on fridges just so you can sell a shit version of ice cream? Like someone made ice cream and they're like, oh look, I, I did it. It's the best. The best dessert in the world. It's fucking, we don't have to do anything else to it. I can make it chocolate. I can make it strawberry. I can even make it a fucking rainbow if you like cock, you know, or you're nine. That's the only. That's the only time you're allowed to ra- make like rainbows is if you if you're nine years old or if you're thirty and you're a dude and you like cock. Only t- anyway, I'm getting off track. What I'm trying to say is ice cream. It got invented, okay? So we don't need gelati anymore. It's not better than ice cream. It's not even close to as good. Sucks. Not good. Close your shop. Don't, actually, you don't even need to close your shop. Just buy ice cream next time. Put all your gelato in the bin. Get your ice cream up. Chocolate gelato? Excuse me. Bin it. Chuck that shit out. Sucks. Not good. What am I talking about? Yeah, anyway, so I'm getting pizza, right? And uh, just taking my rage out on, on Gold Coast on every store. Karaoke bar. I'll yell about that for 10 minutes on my microwave podcast. <laughs> Anyway, see a gelato store. I'm like, fuck that shit. Not going in there. See another gelato store. I walk in. I go, oh, maybe they got an ice cream section. I walk in. The guy goes, hey, welcome. What would you like? What flavor would you like? And I go, oh, do you do ice cream? And he went, no. And I went, oh, okay. See you later. And he went, oh, there's no ice cream shops uh, anywhere around here. And I went, no worries, man. I would rather eat nothing. 
If I if I was in the fucking desert dying of heat stroke and I came across somehow by by some kind of act of God a bunch of gelato, I I would be like, you know what? I know that God did that and that's a miracle and the chances of that happening ever again in the next 3,000 years are infinitely small. But you know what? I'm going to take my fucking chances and I would walk past that shit straight into the desert, into the mirage and die rather than eat that fucking shitty ice. Don't want it. Not good. No one should want it. If you like it, hey, I know you're already writing those comments in the YouTube section. Delete them. Because you're wrong. <laughs> anyway, he goes, that's, that's what shit me. He goes, oh, there's no ice cream places anywhere near here. So I'm like, all right, this is the Gold Coast. I know where I am. It's white people city. I know there's a fucking ice cream joint. So I looked it up. Initially, I would have just given up, got my pizza and gone home. But because he said there was no ice cream around, pissed me off. I'm competitive and bored as fuck. I'm going to find that ice cream. So I look, and there's a Cold Rock Ice Creamery. The shittest ice cream store. But you know what? Better than gelato. Is it gelato or gelati? Maybe it's both. I can't work out if... Maybe gelati's like the plural. Because you wouldn't go gelatos. Or maybe I've been saying the wrong word this entire time. Gelato. Gelato. Okay. Well, what's gelati? Is that like a plural? Okay. So, I've been saying gelati this whole time and I'm a fucking idiot. Great. Oh no, gelati. I guess it's either or. Gelati versus gelato. Okay, here we go. What's the difference between gelati and gelato? This is how much I hate all of the things there are to do in Gold Coast. I could have come here and come to you guys with so many amazing stories of like me going on the theme parks, me going to the beach, me going and enjoying the night nightlife, all of the tourist attractions. But instead, I'm sitting here on a couch yelling at a fucking microwave about the difference between gelati and gelato because I hate this place. Okay. In Italian, gelati is the plural of gelato. Okay, so gelati or gelato, whatever you're talking about. Really, when you think about it, I was correct. Gelati, because I'm talking about every single fucking flavor, not just one of them. Gelati, plural, sucks, delete it. <laughs> you ever wish you could just control Z shit that exists in real life? Like gelati, control Z, cunts on roller skates, delete! Tits, expand. <laughs> um, anyway, so I look up on my phone, Cold Rock Creamery. It's a bit of a walk, but I'm like, hey, fuck that guy. I, I, all I, the only reason I'm doing this is so that I can walk past the gelati shop with my ice cream and give him the nod of, ha, huh, look at this. Better than that. S suck me. <laughs> um, so anyway, I go to Cold Rock and I fucking... Get my, uh, get my ice cream. And uh, the guy working behind the thing is a fan. Uh, which I didn't realize at the time. So I'm like, hey, can I get a small uh, shake? Uh, and by the way, dude, I'm a genius. I've, I was like, normally when I get a shake, you get like two flavors, right? So I'm like, oh, normally I get like peanut butter and chocolate. And that's pretty good. But I switched it up. You know, I fucking, I switched it up. Don't tell me that I'm not cultured because I, I do try new things. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a fucking risk here. And I'm like, I want peanut butter and apple pie. Because I feel like that would be like a salty, caramel, apple sweet thing. And that'd be fucking awesome. And let me tell you, I took a sip and I came in the street. So good. Amazing. Fucking awesome. It makes me now, next time I have apple pie, to want to open my jar of peanut butter and chuck that shit in the middle. Because that would be fucking awesome. But then, the only time I ever have apple pie is when I'm like at you know, Christmas dinner. And I don't want to come in front of all my cousins. I feel like that would be a little bit awkward. I wouldn't be invited back. You know, it's a bit of a Grinch thing to do. Dude, wouldn't that be fucking... I don't think Dr. Zeus would have got published if the Grinch just walked into family dinners and came all everywhere. Like on the family. It's... It's Mr. Grinch. And he goes... Argh! Really, that would be a more effective way of ruining Christmas than just stealing a fucking tree. Isn't that what he did? Should just... Come on all those little who's. <laughs> um, 
I'm lost. Gelati, cold rock. Oh yeah, I'm like, so the guy was a fan, I didn't know, right? So I order it and then as sometimes happens when fans work there and I love this shit, keep doing it, not complaining, he fucking... Uh, I order a small, I pay for a small, it gives me a large, and he goes, I love your work. I love, so good. Fucking awesome. Because I know that they're not allowed to do that. I know that if they got caught doing that, they'd get in trouble. But they do it anyway, and that's exactly the, that's how I know I've attracted the right audience, where they think, oh, my boss would hate this, and then they do it anyway. That's the best, because, listen, if you like my shit, and you're working somewhere, and you could, you do something that's like, a little bit wrong. It's not like stealing. It's not a bad thing, but it's definitely not something your boss would be happy about. They wouldn't say, well done. They might say, hey, in future, don't do that, please. And then you go, okay, my bad. Not a disciplinary meeting level of offense, but definitely something they wouldn't appreciate. If you think about doing something like that and you think, oh, that would annoy my boss. And then you think, oh, I probably wouldn't get in trouble, but I might have a awkward conversation about it where they say hey don't do that I guess I'm not gonna do it if you don't do it you I'm not I don't want you as a fan (laughs) you got the wrong energy here's what I want I want oh my boss would hate that I'm gonna do it twice that's what I want that's a and that's the type of people that that's the community that I want all right it's just cunts who are cunts cunts (laughs) lady cunts man cunts non-binary, gender-fluid cunts, whatever you like. That's what I like. Anyway, so I got a fucking, I order a small, I get a large, I'm like, oh, thank you so much, man. Handshake, selfie, leave. Fair transaction, love that shit. Anyway, I'm thinking, oh, fuck, I just ordered a family pizza, and now I also have a large shake that I only got to piss off the gelati guy. I feel like this is a lot of food. And then I'm like, eh, whatever. I'll just eat a little bit less pizza. And then I get, I go back to the fucking, I had to go to La Poqueta. That's how white Gold Coast is. I'm like, I want a good pizza. The only pizza joint was Domino's or La Poqueta. And I'm like, I guess I'm not going to shit for three days straight into La Poqueta, right? And I go to pick up my family sized pizza. And uh, I, I get it. And the guy gives me my pizza. And uh, he comes out of the kitchen, which is weird because he's definitely the guy who cooks and not the guy who serves. And I'm like, okay, I know what this means. I'm about to get some free shit. And he goes, hey, man, I love your work. Keep it up. Gives me my pizza on top. Nice little surprise. Something I didn't order. Love that shit. I'm like, hey, bro, thank you very much. Would you like a photo? He goes, no, I can't. My boss would see me and he wouldn't like that. And I go, I love that shit that he took a risk with giving me some free shit. Uh, but then didn't push it too far. Perfect type of cunt, okay? So I'm like, thank you so much, mate. I'll fucking leave. I get back and I realize I have a family pizza, a massive fucking shake, and a free thing of garlic bread that I didn't order, That, but I appreciate. Take it back to my hotel and I go, I think this is a plus size model diet. I'm not sure because they all those cunts keep telling me that they're healthy even though they look like cars but I think I've stumbled across a plus size model diet. I'm like whatever, I'm trying to put on weight, I'm trying to look better, apparently all those chicks are beautiful, I'll believe it. <laughs> I guess I'll sign myself up and jump on that bandwagon that can't move because the back of it is scraping across the ground because the suspension can't handle it the weight I'm on it so I'm like okay and then I fucking I load up and at this point it's only like 9 30 almost 10 I open up my laptop I load up episodes of Dragon Ball because I just read the manga I'm like I wanted to be like I want to watch I want to read the manga of Dragon Ball watch every episode of the anime of Dragon Ball read the manga for Dragon Ball Z watch the anime then read the the then watch Dragon Ball GT even though We all know that that fucking Akira didn't like that shit, whatever. I'll watch it anyway because Super Saiyan 4 looks sick. Gonna watch that shit. And then I'm gonna read the manga for Dragon Ball Super and watch Dragon Ball Super. And then by the time I'm 80, I might finish the fucking series. That's what I'm doing with my life. That's my biggest goal at the moment. Fuck my tour. (laughs) I want to finish every single episode and movie and manga related to the Dragon Ball franchise. Because I 
uh, sh- should, shouldn't be on the Gold Coast. That's why I shouldn't be on the fucking Gold Coast because that's what I'm trying to do with my life. I open up the fucking laptop. Uh, Dragon Ball starts playing. I open up my fucking pizza and I look at all the food that I have and I look at Dragon Ball in front of me and I look outside the window at how many amazing things there are to do in Gold Coast and how I don't want to do any of them. And I think to myself, I'm going to eat everything. I'm going to eat the whole pizza. I'm going to eat all the garlic bread and I'm going to drink my fucking massive peanut butter apple pie shake. And I watched 10 episodes of Dragon Ball until 4 a.m. in the morning and I ate it all. Family pizza, massive garlic bread, giant shake, 10 episodes of Dragon Ball. And I went to sleep and I had, I don't know if I had a dream or if I went to another dimension because it was, I, I had, I, something happened in my fucking brain and in my body. And I don't know if I had a dream, but I definitely wasn't in my fucking bed. I wasn't in the Gold Coast anymore. I was somewhere else. And I think that means I have the best job in the world. <laughs> what did you do on fucking... Thursday night, man. Oh, I ate a family pizza, a shake, a garlic bread, watched 10 episodes of Dragon Ball, passed out at 4am and dreamed myself into an alternate reality. You? Oh, I, uh, I, I watched Netflix and then f- fell asleep. <laughs> so, uh, hey guys, make sure you snap up those tickets and jump on loosespears.com slash gig list for the pre-sale so I can continue this absolutely fucked lifestyle of mine and you can see an amazing hour of comedy um all right let's do fucking miscellaneous bit at the end shall we oh also um my (laughs) my, this is so disrespectful my internet this is this is also how little i have to do i i wanted to go to an internet cafe to play world of warcraft because that's how fucking bored i am the closest one is like an hour away because it's the Gold Coast and I looked it up and it's like, it's an it's not just an internet cafe. It's like a fucking Gold Coast internet cafe. It's like for nerds with social skills. Worst nerds ever. That's the, Those are the fucking nerds that like they come up and they talk to you. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, it's like nerds with social skills. It's like the new nerd. You know what I mean? Like 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 when I, when I was growing up, if you liked video games heaps, you, you know social skills. But now... It's like that, it's like the new 18, 19 year olds where gaming and internet and all of that shit is so fucking normal where everyone does it. The girls, guys, doesn't matter. Everyone games and everyone uses the internet. So they, they're like, it's just a healthy part of their life rather than a fucking internet addiction like my parents thought it was, which also, looking back on it, I also think it was. <laughs> Nerds with social skills. So it's like, you got your fucking internet cafes that I went to when I was fucking 14 and now they got bars in them and alcohol and, and LED lights. Hey, turn those off. <laughs> I don't want to see anyone next to me. Anyway. Um, it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end. So I didn't go to that. So, oh, the disrespectful thing, the, my internet wasn't working for the first two days here in the hotel, in my hotel room. Uh, so I got pissed off about that. So uh, I got them to turn it back on. Uh, and then I'm, I've just been downloading 60 gigs of World of Warcraft on my phone using the hotel internet. And I, I think that's a real big fuck you to them. Or I'm going to leave the hotel and the people who booked my hotel are going to be like, Hey, Lewis, quick question. Why is there a $10,000 internet data usage bill for your hotel stay? And I'll go, Oh, <laughs> wasn't me. Must have been Connor while he was editing the thing. And then that's just a production cost of what we're making. (laughs) Not my problem. All right. Um, Where are we? So we got, uh, if you would like to say, if you need any life advice or you have a question or you have a story to tell me, uh, send it through to podcast at loosespears.com. Let me know if you want to be anonymous. Otherwise I'll read your name out because I just, I'm fucking Ron Burgundy, man. I'm reading it. Um, And uh, yeah, 
So, first up, LA Comedy Clubs. Hey Lewis, I'm going to LA for a trip, and I want to know what the best comedy clubs to visit are. I'm not a comedian, but I do want to know where the best places to see some comedy are. Thanks heaps, have a shit one. Well, Max, Comedy Store. Go to the Comedy Store every single night. I saw Bill Burr there. I saw, I hung out with fucking Joe Rogan, Andrew Santino, Neil Brennan, uh, Bert Kreischer. Who the fuck else did I see? I can't even, so many famous cunts, I can't even name or remember them. Yeah, the Comedy Store, the best club in the world uh, at this point. I also went to the Laugh Factory. I saw Chris D'Elia there. I saw Brian Callen and both of them two on stage. Oh, I saw Brendan Shaw at the Comedy Store. He was good. Um, I saw Michael Lenoci. I saw... Fuck, who else did I see? I don't know. So many people. Uh, the two clubs I went to in, in LA were the Comedy Store, which is the, the best, clearly. And I also went to the Laugh Factory, which is also fucking amazing. And the Laugh Factory, I think, has a better setup as an audience member to sit in. It's more comfortable and you can see more. But that being said, the comedy store is bigger and has better, bigger name acts. So comedy store and the laugh factory were both really, really good for me. I've also heard good things about the improv, but I've not been there. Um, where are we? Um, here we go, he's a banger. Girlfriend started open relationship without telling me. Hey dude, I know the answer to this. That's not an open relationship. She's cheating on you. Leave that bitch. She's a whore. Um, hey Lewis, uh, same fucker from last time. Oh wait, you've already fucking told me this. Okay, this is an update. Oh right, I remember this. Girlfriend started open relationship without telling me. Blah blah blah. Basically, after last time, nothing changed in me and my girl's relationship until this weekend. Oh my god. Actually, I need to fucking open relationship. I need to read the other... Girlfriend... Here we go. Girlfriend wants open relationship. Okay, so... What he emailed last time I read this out. Last weekend, my girlfriend dropped the bombshell on me that she doesn't believe in monogamy and she would like us to be in an open relationship next year. We've been dating a year and a half. By next year, she means the final year of high school. And then uh, the guy doesn't want to do it, wasn't comfortable with it. And then he says, should I give it a try or tell her I'm not cool with it? Thanks, man. Um, have a shit one. And uh, I told him, hey, if you're not comfortable with it, absolutely do not do it because you will hate it and uh, it will end up with you guys fighting. Don't do it. Just break up. Just tell her no. You either be with me or you be with other people. You can't be do both. Okay? That's what you do. So, here's his update. And the start of the email doesn't bode well because it's girlfriend started open relationship without telling me. Okay, great. Hey Lewis, same fucker from last time. So basically, last after last time, nothing changed in me and my girl's relationship until this weekend. I really hope that you told her you didn't want to do this because otherwise it could kind of be your fault for not communicating that you're uncomfortable with it. It was the last day of school before summer and she didn't have a final. So I went over to my girlfriend's house to surprise her after school. I had a key, so oh no, <laughs> I don't like where this is going. I had a key, so I just walked into her room to see one of my, to see one of my best friend's balls deep in her. <clears throat> Fuck. As you can imagine, I didn't really know what to do. So I went with my first reaction, which was to king hit him and pull him out of her. See, how did you pull him out? I, okay, I shouldn't be saying this, but this is kind of funny to me because you said you pulled him out. So did you So did you punch him and then use that punching hand to grab him on the shoulder and then pull him out? Or did you punch him and then grab him by the dick and pull him out like that? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Sorry, had to ask. Uh, King hit him and pulled him out of her. Just a note for everybody listening, don't punch people in the back of the head ever for any reason no matter what unless they're raping someone I could see that would be appropriate not in this situation because you can kill them and it happens all the time I think it just happened to someone on the Gold Coast the week before I got here the guy didn't die but he could die and the guy who hit him is going to go to prison forever 
never under any circumstances punch people in the back of the head no matter how much of a cunt they are because even if they deserve it you will go to jail for life even if you don't kill them which you have a very high chance of doing don't hit people in the back of the head that being said I understand why you did it and who knows I, I could be capable of doing that in that situation a king hit him and pulled him out of her by the dick I, th I then proceeded to punch the shit out of him before leaving. I really should have ended it when she told me she wanted an open relationship, but I was an idiot who trusted that she was saying that without a motive. I lost one of my oldest homies and my girlfriend in about one minute, and it's a shitty way to kick off the summer, not gonna lie. Your old videos are giving me a good laugh though, so thanks for that. Sorry to hear that, man. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I guess... This is a great reason why you should communicate when you feel uncomfortable with something that your partner is doing or thinking about doing or brought up. But also, it's not your fault. She's a fucking asshole for doing that. And your friend is an even bigger asshole. Because here's the thing. Even if both of you are okay with an open relationship, you don't fuck each other's best friends. You go and find... People that you haven't met, who you aren't going to see around the office every day, thinking about how that one time they fucked your wife, right? Surely. Let me know. Are you in an open relationship? I w I'm interested. I want to know. Have you done threesomes or shit like that before? Is it with people that you know? If so, do you see those people out and, and think in your head, that's fucking weird? Did it ruin your relationship or your friendship? I want to know. If, you fuck, if you're in a relationship and you fucked a friend or someone close to you as well, did that fuck that up? Email me, podcast at loosebeers.com. I want to know. Um, I feel like that's not a thing that you should do because you would see those fucking people all the time. I feel like it would be really awkward. I'm sorry to hear that, man. But you know what? I think ultimately, you're young as fuck, obviously. You're just entering your last year of high school. What are you, 17 or 18? You've, you lucked out, dude. You dodged a fucking bullet. You got... A, a girlfriend who didn't listen or pay attention to you and also didn't care to get consent before starting an open relationship, i.e. cheating on you because you didn't say you were cool with it. Uh, so fucked her off. That's great. That's a win. You got rid of her. And also, you got rid of a friend who always wanted to fuck your girlfriend and when given the opportunity, clearly jumped on it. Fuck him. That's great. You've lost, while it may, may hurt, I, man, dude, I have, I have lost, like, some close, close friends when I was young. Some really fucking close friends. And at the time, devastating. How am I going to move on? Oh, I fucking love that person. They were, like, fucking a big part of my life. How will I move on? And now, I look back on that shit and go, fucking, thank God I'm not friends with those people anymore. They made my life shit. And there's a reason why I'm not friends with them anymore. And now I only have friends in my life that I want and trust. It's the best. So to me, that seems like a very, very hurtful win. A bittersweet win for you, bro. So I don't know, look after yourself. Watch Dragon Ball, eat a family pizza and, and kill someone in a karaoke bar. You'll be all right. Um, with that, guys, <clears throat> I'm going to end the podcast. i got to get to this gig. I was supposed to be there at 7.30. It is now 7.10, and I think it's a half-hour drive away. But, hey, I'm headlining, so whatever. Um, I will talk to you guys on Sunday, and I hope you guys have a fucking shit one. I'm about to abuse the internet even more than I have been by uploading an hour-long video file on the hotel internet. Thanks for listening, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back in the warehouse next Sunday. And, um, oh, I... Look, I may have something huge to announce next week. If not, definitely the week after. Stay fucking tuned. Jump on loosebeers.com slash gig list if you want to get into the pre-sale for my upcoming tour, which will go on sale in a couple of weeks, uh, and you want tickets before anyone else, I highly recommend you do that because the list, as I'm saying, there's 12,000 cunts on it, literally, and we do not, we do not have anywhere near close to 12,000 tickets on sale. So... I would get on that shit. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Lewis Spears. I will talk to you next Sunday. Have a shit one. Fuck karaoke.